Hello, everybody, and welcome to your 21st C++ Allegro 5 tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be learning an alternate alternate method on how to do individual sprite animation. Okay, so when we were learning about individual sprite animation, we looked at an uh, image of, of Ganondorf or whatever. I think that's, yeah. And, uh... We looked at it and we said that like for this image for instance that each of the images in uh, in the frame are different sizes and because due to sprite sheet animation we require them to be the same width and height then we that would pose a problem well in this tutorial we're going to be learning how uh, an another method on how to avoid this problem now I haven't seen this code anywhere on the internet before, uh, so this is this code is completely made up by me. I don't know if it's been done by anybody before. I'm not taking credit for it, uh, but yeah, this is the f this is the first time you might be seeing this method. Maybe the first and last time you're seeing this method. So it's a, it's a good thing to pay attention to. So basically, the uh, well, this with this method. Uh, if you have a lot of images like this, it's going to slow down the loading time of your game. So a, a, a little advice is to have like a loading screen or something while you're doing this. Uh, but yeah, what we're basically going to do is that we don't really need the whole line going down. But I just did that to make it clear where we're separating the images. But what's going to happen is that we're going to be scrolling through the images uh, like so. When it when it reaches uh, when it sees a red section of the um of the image right uh then it's gonna set that as the uh the new starting point for this image and the ending point for this image and it's gonna sc scroll all the way scroll 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 all the way here then when it detects red then it's gonna add that as a new starting point for this and the ending point for this image right here and then till the end of the image. So in reality, you only need like one pixel at the top of the image just to signify where it starts, right? Uh, one thing is that if your image, if your image is going to be is going to overlap like the top of this um, screen right here, make sure it's not the same color as the color that you're using to identify as a marker, or you're gonna have problems. Also, one thing that you should note is that if you have, if you don't want to have all your sprites in one line like this, or you want to have them on like uh, different different lines then you could have one vertical line going across and detect or uh, whatever uh, but in this tutorial I'm just going to be teaching you this simple method and you can modify it any way you want to okay so this is the image that we're going to be loading in uh, so but first of all what we want to do is we want to include sorry you want to include the vector class now for a lot of C++ beginners they don't learn about the vector class because uh, probably considered a more intermediate or to advanced subject but what a vector is like a resizable array okay so a vector uh, can increase in size decrease in size in size it's really dynamic right and uh, you don't really have to know much about vectors to get through this tutorial but if you don't know vectors and I suggest you look at it before or after this tutorial uh, so firstly, we, we want to load in our image, and so this is called uh, animation.png. So, wait, I don't know if this one has the red lines. Yeah, it does. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, since this is code from last tutorial, we're just going to erase all this. Uh, what name is player? AL load bitmap animation dot png okay so we load in our image and if we were to draw this to the screen oh, oh no we were drawing our bitmap region because this is a spread animation code sorry okay so if we were to draw the bitmap so player X, Y, no. Then okay, we see our image right there. Okay, so we got our image to the screen. So now it's a matter of uh, uh just drawing it to the screen when we need it. Okay. So uh, so let us start off by creating our our vectors. 
sorry okay so now we're, we're gonna we're gonna need uh two vectors we're gonna need a vector for source and we're gonna need a vector for uh, the width okay so right uh, here I guess uh, the vectors are part of the std namespace so if you're if you're using the name the std namespace and you don't need to put std colon colon but yeah so we're gonna make a, a integer a vector of type int and we're going to name this uh, the source I guess or yeah the starting value and we'll do std vector integer and we'll name this width okay so we have our, our width and our source so we know that the first image starts at uh, zero at, at zero on our bitmap right so if we look at it if we look at our image it starts at the coordinate it starts at the section zero right and then this will signify when it ends okay so firstly well after we create our source we want to do is just put source dot push back and what push back does is that it just adds a one to the array so we'll say so now when we push back we'll push up back to value zero so source zero in our, our vector or an array whatever uh then the value will be zero okay so after that, after these two variables right here, we need three colors. Okay, we need uh, we need a pixel, a last pixel, and uh, we need a color that our identity or like uh, the color that we're identifying. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to after we create our source dot pushback what we need to do is we need to create a for loop that will cycle through the width of the image and then get the certain pixels and and we will signify uh where each image starts etc etc so what we're going to do we're going to say uh, i we loop until um uh, i is less than l underscore get bitmap width and that's a player and we increment i by one okay and oh we create the player after sorry so we need to create the player before the loop okay so uh so we created our player so what we need to do is that we need to set our color so our color is going to be equal to l map rgb and or if you want to be specific rgba so then say uh say for instance that you want your identifier to be red all the time right but you have another red uh color over there if we do rgba we can get the alpha color so maybe you could set this to a red value with the alpha color of say 100 so then if it if it, if it detects another red value but that alpha color is not 100 uh, then it will ignore it so to be more specific what we're going to do is we're going to put uh RGBA. So we're going to say 255 0 0 and 255. Okay, so we're identifying a red color and that's going to be our identifier. And for a pixel, what we're going to do is we're going to say L get bitmap no get sorry get pixel. Okay, and we get the pixel from our player bitmap and uh, the X is going to be I and the Y is going to be zero. So basically it's going to loop and it's going to scroll through the top of the bitmap to try and get this color over here. Now last, uh, well actually I'm going to end this tutorial now since it's getting pretty long and we'll continue in the next tutorial. Uh, so thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed this and bye.